Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Ah, it's good to see you guys here. Welcome back. We got an existential question of the day to round out your Friday, which is, does it bother you that you can never actually see your real face? The only part of your face that you can really see is your nose and your tongue if you try, but you can't actually see your face. Everything that you see is either a reflection or something else portraying it. You've never actually seen your own face. Does that bother you? It doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that you not have our merch. We have hot news coffee mugs. We have dope tech designs that you can pick up at the link in the video description. Go check out our merch, get some for yourself, become a better person because of what you're wearing. We all know what you wear defines who you are. And especially with this trialing times that's upon us right now where you might have to stay home, you wanna look fresh. So do that, UFD tech merch. Okay, speaking of being fresh, there's a fresh new rumor coming out about the PlayStation 5 with some details in the most cryptic way ever, which gives you pause as to whether or not it's actually true. You can see here the image is a bird delivering a message to Mark Cerny, and it has a whole bunch of information on it. It has, Mr. Bird, why are you delivering the mail this way? Why not use the traditional post service? Mr. Bird cannot speak English. Mr. Bird simply responds in bird tug, coo, 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 all the way down. So basically people have been able to decipher this to mean that all of the coos that are there is 52 and 52 coups would be 52 compute units. <laughs> C-U-S, coups, right? That makes sense to some degree. Anyways, that would mean that at the frequency that the message also supposes that the clock speed of the PlayStation 5 would run at would be putting it right around the 11 teraflops territory, which we know would just be one teraflop under the current Xbox Series X that has been announced. So the PlayStation 5 looks to have 52 compute units at 1,000 743 megahertz and thereby is slower than the next generation Xbox. So take this with the largest grain of pigeon poo that you can because this is clearly the most inventive way for people to either make up their own rumors or it's a PlayStation marketing strategy somehow to be this cryptic? Who knows? Companies leak their stuff all the time to gain promotion beforehand, so this could be part of Sony's thing. They're never gonna actually say it for a while, and that builds up all the hype and anticipation of us fanboys to make sure that when they finally do release the information, we're excited about it. Or, in other cases, we're super disappointed because we take on a form of our own and then create new rumors that they didn't intend that are overblown beyond what they expected, so that happens. So. Take this huge grin pigeon poo with salt in it. Make sure that you don't necessarily believe it, but according to this leak, PlayStation 5 will be less powerful than the Xbox Series X. Not slow by any means, but definitely more powerful, and the 11 teraflop GPU would put it above Google Stadia, so another reason why Stadia sucks. But then more console news, Local Ray, which is a company that has been dedicated to coming up with a way of doing ray tracing with current hardware that's out there, they came out and said in an interview that they are definitely partnering with one of the leading console manufacturers to bring ray tracing to the consoles. So you would have to assume Microsoft already has theirs with DXR, they already have their way of doing it. Local Ray would then probably be partnered with Sony. If you wanna guess, one of the reasons why Local Ray is kind of cool is because they've been working on technology to bring ray tracing not just out to high-end hardware such as NVIDIA's RTX technology, but actually bringing out to things like Intel's integrated graphics or mobile phone processors. They found a way to actually bring real-time ray tracing into environments like that. And so bringing them to a console would be something that they can adapt. And since Microsoft already has their sorted with DXR, this could be something that we could see coming up in the PlayStation 5 as well. Speaking of PlayStation 5, you want new games, right? Well, Epic, has acquired a company that made the facial animations in games such as Hellblade, Senua Sacrifice, God of War. They acquired the company Cubic Motion and they're joining the Unreal team. Epic Games now owns all of the people and they're potentially gonna be building all of that facial animation feature into Unreal Engine to give it more lifelike facial animations. So all of the games that I read that Cubic Motion was responsible for at least, at least partially animating are beautiful. God of War, Senua Sacrifice, Marvel Spider-Man, all good looking gorgeous games with like really good facial animation. So we'll see if this being rolled out into Unreal Engine means that we're gonna get more good 
visually appealing games. I love that. Cool, right? Speaking of games, Square Enix has said that they are working on how to announce their next generation games now that E3 has been canceled. They're saying that they do have some super exciting stuff and they are disappointed, but they're exploring other options to share our games with you, which I mean, I'm super excited to find out about Final Fantasy Remake Part 2, which will come out in 2027. So yeah. I definitely am going to be watching the Square Enix thing, or potentially we could find out that we're going to get a Final Fantasy X remake. That'd be great. I'd I appreciate that. that. Get that on the PlayStation 6. Square Enix, come on, give me your good games in the future. Just delay them, okay? I'm used to this. I'm used to you announcing something and it being delayed. So delaying the announcement is just par for the course. Speaking of par for the course, people being home means that they're going to consume more entertainment. And it appears that that spike is already starting to increase as Twitch viewership in March appears to be double what it was last year. This is obviously partially due to Twitch's growth, but at the same time, there's been a spike in March because more people are being quarantined, they're being forced to remain home, and so they have to seek out new entertainment opportunities. And the peaks coming in March are around 2.2 million concurrent viewers, whereas last year in March, it was around 1.1 million concurrent viewers. Speaking of Twitch, if you want to watch us on Twitch, we've been doing live streams there. So go follow us. Link for our Twitch channel will be in the video description. Give us your Twitch Prime sub. It's free for you. If you have Amazon Prime, you connect it to your Twitch account, Twitch Prime, then we get free money. Costs you nothing. I make more money. Speaking of making money, Elon Musk has been making hand over fist as of late. And there's a new popular mechanics report coming out showing that the battery farm that he was able to build in Australia has been an undeniable success. So you can check out this article if you want to know more about the details behind that. But speaking of an undeniable success, Microsoft. I can't believe I just put those words together, but you're welcome because Microsoft announced that it's taking down a 9 million computer botnet known as Cures, and they were able to do that after tracking it for over eight years in 35 countries. And they finally were able to work with the computers and bring it down so that the botnet wasn't sending out pump and dump stock scams, fake pharmaceutical spam emails, and Russian dating scams. But speaking of a botnet that people chose to install themselves, Ring has announced that they are pausing a lot of their third party data collection at this point because it came out that Ring, on top of getting paid for the device that you have and a monthly subscription service to maintain all of your security footage, they were also selling your personal data to other companies. And they're saying that they're working on that. They're gonna pause it for right now so that it can be toggled by the user more easily. So they're gonna bring it back, but then they're gonna bring it back with a way for you to be able to turn it off. So, you know. The one thing that weirds me out is that Ring said that they were using this information to sell ads and get personalized Ring ads based on the data. Like, I don't understand how me walking in my front door personalizes my ads. Is it because you see I'm carrying things I shouldn't be carrying? Huh? Do, are you watching me with all my hand sanitizer and toilet paper? Huh? So what you doing? Are you gonna give me like preparedness stuff now? I don't like this. And the US government doesn't like TikTok, and, I mean, they're boomers, what do you expect? Anyways, there's a bill going through the Senate right now that potentially could ban government employees from having TikTok on their government phones. Obviously not necessarily doing it personally, but it would prevent them from using TikTok because the US government presumes that TikTok, because it's owned by ByteDance and they have connections to the Chinese government, that TikTok is actually just a massive spying tool, which not necessarily saying they're wrong, but it's also been found out that the US government has done this before with their stuff. So like, if the US government would do it, why wouldn't the Chinese government do it? The US is worried because they've done it before. They know the tricks. Or they're trying to prevent somebody like this guy who is trying to run for Congress on TikTok. There's a 26 year old dude named Joshua Collins who's a TikTok star and he's running for Congress. And one of his videos said, yeet the rich. So the Senate has to pass the bill to stop this guy from meeting all of the rich people. Don't go on political TikTok, it's not good. Speaking of not good, Tinder, not good because they're apparently making a show. They have an international debut of their apocalyptic adventure called Swipe Nights, but they decided to delay it because they think releasing an apocalyptic post dystopian future is not a good way to live right now. And especially with people probably not using their app to go out as much. I'm just more confused why Tinder has their own show 
and secondly, why anybody would watch it, and thirdly, would it really be in bad taste to release it right now? I understand like movies not being released in movie theaters because that's happening. Like A Quiet Place Part Two got delayed, but then I would like I would want them to release it in my home theater. Like uh, make it streaming. I have to pay twenty dollars and I can stream it right now. They're like I'll pay for that and I'll have my own viewing party at home. Make me do that. Talk about something else I don't understand. Harley Davidson apparently will have Android Auto coming out to their motorcycles in the coming future, which is exactly what we all wanted. You want those old dudes on the Harley Davidsons with the blasting speakers looking down at the touchscreen on the bike and not paying attention to the road. And before anybody gets upset at that joke, I personally am a motorcycle rider. I've been riding motorcycles for over a decade now, so I understand that a motorcycle's greatest uh, danger is other people, not themselves. It's a joke. And speaking, and speaking of things that I don't understand, again, it's data caps. I hate data caps. Why do you have data caps? Data caps don't actually help networks because it has nothing to do with bandwidth. You have a giant tube, right? Tube is the bandwidth. You have so much that you can put through at one time. But if somebody's just using a little stream all of the time, that doesn't necessarily affect the rest of the tube. If they use more data over a month, what does it matter? If I use 15 terabytes of data to download the entire collection of Doctor Who and re-upload it all the time, what does it matter to you as long as I'm doing it legally? That's a weird example. Anyways, it would be in bad taste for all of the people who now have to telecommute due to Voldemort affecting their jobs and they can't go in, that companies would then charge you for overages on your data cap because you have to use your home internet more because you're required to stay home for your job. That's in bad taste. So companies like AT&T, as well as others, are announcing that they're not going to implement uh, data caps on their broadband home access right now. My ISP hasn't announced that, which if they do, I hope they give me a refund because I'm already paying for unlimited data. Bull crap. We also use a wicked ton because we do YouTube videos and we're downloading and uploading stuff all the time. That's neither here nor there, but Verizon has also announced that they're gonna be increasing their network infrastructure investment by $500 million, and they somehow connected it to the Voldemort outbreak that's going on right now, and they're saying it's to prepare for the rise in telecommuting and online learning amid the outbreak that's happening right now, but your investment's not gonna like see fruit for years. I don't, what? I know what a lot of people didn't want. What? And that's for prices to go down. And Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency market, lost 21% yesterday, and it's actually down 42% since it's February highs. Bitcoin crashing down to $5,500. Oh my gosh. Whatever are we gonna do from its high in February of $10,000. So if you're in the crypto market, whew, don't sell now. Should have sold at the top, beginning of the top. Cancer, somehow. I don't know. Scientists have come out and said that 5G does not cause cancer. It's gonna be safe. You can read the publication down below, get the details on that, and argue about the conspiracy theories. There's been a conspiracy theory that 5G has caused I don't, I don't subscribe to that in any way, nor does Apple subscribe to holding Apple sessions anymore, or today at Apple sessions rather, because they've been suspended at all US stores because Death Eaters come in when that happens. And then also Apple, good news, has said that they're gonna be reopening all of their China stores on Friday. So every store in China should be open for Apple, which is a good thing. And what's also a good thing is seeing behind yourself, having a 270 degree field of vision, right? You want that? Well, this camera lens has it. It can actually see behind its frame. It's gonna cost you $39,000, but it's the C4 Precision Optic 4.9 millimeter F3.5 Hyper Fisheye, 270 degree field of view. It's crazy. I'd be able to stop so many ninjas. Hey, when they sneak up on you. Yeah, you gotta watch behind you. And I gotta watch out what I'm gonna say because I've already said a few words I shouldn't say in this episode that are liable to get us demonetized. But if you buy our merch, then we won't have to worry about money. And if you sign up for Twitch Prime on our Twitch channel, we also won't have to worry about money because we have mouths to feed. Reef has a mouth. I'm hungry. I have to stuff food in there. But you know what? Yeah. When I stuff food in his mouth, he can't see it. Which brings us back to existential question of the day. Does it bother you that you can never actually see your own face? Reese, does it bother you that you can't see your mouth while I'm stuffing food down it? A little bit. It does, it bothers him. And it bothers me to continue. Have a good weekend, goodbye. Uh, what? What? <laughs> <laughs>